Aeon system, activate. Accessing phase space. Deploying avatar. I won't fall! Arcus, activate! It's my turn! Break through! My turn! There! Now! An opening! Let's go! <sighs> Spirit unification! Let's go! Let's go! Sit! It's my turn! There! Leave it to me! Huh. Let's go! My blade, calm as still water. Now! <sighs> Leave it to me. 
It's my turn. There! I'm up! Sit! Don't take me lightly! Yes! It's my turn! Break through! It's my turn! Sit! My turn! Yes! Now! An opening! It's my turn! Sit! It's down! It's mine! Yes! Break through! My turn. Yeah. I'm up. Ha! It's my turn. Ha! Let's go. Crimson Slash. This is the Blade of the Eight Leaves. teacher
Yeah, last year. When Calvert attacked, he saved us. We fell out of the car, but he used his big toy to protect us. Yuna was with us when it happened. Yuna, you should at least eat some breakfast. I brought you some porridge Sandy made. <sighs> Louise and Jessica are worried too. And not just them, the entire branch campus is concerned for you. Ourselves included, of course. Why? Why didn't you two go with Instructor Reen? Didn't you want to go? Of course we did, but... We didn't think it was right to leave you behind. <laughs> you may already be aware, but I was originally meant to attend the main campus. I would follow the same path as the other members of the Vander family in serving the Imperial family. I never once doubted that I would one day be given the honor of being appointed aide to Prince Cedric. However, last fall, the government suddenly decided to relieve the Vander family of its duties. The honor of protecting the royal family should not be monopolized by the nobility, they claimed. My brother was then shipped off to the outskirts, my father and uncle buried in military busywork, and I suddenly found my life's purpose gone. And so I made a rash decision and switched to the branch campus at the last minute. <sighs> Kurt. To be perfectly honest, I barely knew a thing about Crossbell before this trip. At first, I thought being annexed into such a powerful country as Erebonia would be a relief to Crossbell's citizens. However, pride in one's home isn't that simple. Compared to the helplessness you and the people of Crossbell must feel, my troubles seem like nothing. Once I realized that, I decided I couldn't leave you here alone. <sighs> I have trouble understanding why you're feeling like this, Yuna. I never had a hometown, nor was I born from biological parents. I suspect I was created so as to experience as little emotion as possible. What? <sighs> but hearing you last night, I experienced a strange feeling in my chest. Then, Instructor Reen asked if I was okay leaving you here alone, and... That is the reason I am still here. <sighs> Ali... I... Unlike you two, I don't have a good reason for staying behind. I know what I should do. Regardless of what's going on, I just need to grit my teeth and keep moving. I know that, but my reason is just my own selfishness.
Ah, nothing lights a fire in my breast quite like courage in the face of insurmountable odds. I shall join you on this quest of yours. It is a pleasure to see you once more, my dear Tio. Also, I'll have you take care to say my name properly. I am the drifting poet and seeker of love, Olivier. You wouldn't do for passerby to mistake me for the famed debaucherous Prince of Erebonia, <laughs> now would it? <laughs> oh, they're far more preoccupied with Alfin at the moment. That naughty debaucherous prince has gone off on his own to play with Mishi in the theme park. A bitter thought though it may be, I've benefited from the absence of a certain constantly fretting bodyguard this time. Ah, but it is because I am a member of the royal family that I must do this. You see, my position prevents me from speaking out on behalf of Crossbell. Thus, I have no other choice but to turn to action this day. Otherwise, I would not be able to face the people of Crossbell I have come to know and love. Upon my telling this to Alfin, she could do little but sigh and agree to my escape scheme. I also come bearing a message from Elise to Reed. She wishes you well and says to stay safe. Prince Olivert, Class 7 as well. On behalf of Randy, Ellie, and Lloyd, please protect Crossbell from this disaster looming over it. Yes! Yeah! A year and a half ago, the Empire took over Crossbell without any bloodshed. Of course, Calvert wasn't about to let that stand. Their military strength is about even with Erebonia's. Calvert's armored aviation divisions are full of highly mobile tanks and gunships. They invaded Crossbell to try and drive out the Imperial Army. The Imperial Army held them off with their Panzer Soldats, but during the first few battles, there were a number of gunships that broke through the front lines. Because the occupation was so sudden, most of the citizens were in a panic. Most people fled the city, hoping they'd be away from the fighting in rural towns or remote mining villages. We had the same idea and tried to at least get Ken and Nana to safety in our Morica village. I had just gotten back from the police academy and got an acquaintance to help drive us to the village. That's when it happened. On the way there, we encountered a Calbardian gunship. It was hit by Imperial fire, and I'm sure the pilot started to panic. It started firing at us. Even though we were clearly not a military transport, our driver tried to maneuver around it, but the vehicle took a hit and we were all thrown out of it. It was frustrating. I felt so powerless. All my training at the police academy didn't help one bit. I threw myself on top of Ken and Nana, swearing I'd make sure at least they survived. And then... A gray shadow swooped down on us. It looked like a giant statue of a knight had come to life. With one swing of its sword, it cut off the gunship's rotor, letting it land a ways away. And just like that, we were saved. Are you alright? Is anyone injured? I 
heard the voice of a young man coming from inside the giant knight. I found out later. That was the first official mission of the man now known as the Ashen Chevalier.